There lies a mysterious occurrence deep beneath the sands of South Australia. All signs point to a massive dual asteroid impact known as the East and West Warburton Craters. It's suspected that a massive asteroid or comet split into two before smashing into Australia, with each leaving behind craters of 200 kilometers in diameter. They are believed to have occurred during the Carboniferous period, between 358.9 to 298.9 million years ago. I made a video on the asteroid impact that exists in New South Wales, which is suspected to be an astonishing 520 kilometers in diameter. You can find a link to that video in the description. Prior to the announcement of this impact crater, the East and West Warburton sites were thought to be the largest impact sites on Earth. The only thing that stopped them from taking first place was the fact that they split in two prior to impact, leaving the Vredeford impact site in South Africa as taking first place prior to the announcement of the impact site in New South Wales. The link to the video that I made on that will also be in the description. The East and West Warburton craters are buried under nearly 4 kilometers worth of sediment. The area where the Warburton impacts occurred was likely covered by extensive swamp forests, rich in primitive plants and inhabited by diverse amphibian and early reptile species. The climate was warm and humid, with periodic marine transgressions influencing the landscape. This biome was very different from the arid and semi-arid conditions seen in much of Australia today. Asteroid impacts the size of the Warburton impacts would have caused significant environmental disruptions, including the release of vast amounts of energy, heat, and potentially triggering volcanic activity. They would have had profound and far-reaching effects on the Earth's environment and ecosystem. The impact would release an immense amount of energy, equivalent to millions of nuclear bombs detonating simultaneously. This would create an explosion with temperatures reaching several thousand degrees Celsius instantly vaporizing the asteroid and a significant volume of the Earth's crust. The initial impact would form a transient crater, which would quickly collapse to form a larger, more stable crater structure. Central uplift domes would form due to the elastic rebound of the Earth's crust. The impact would generate massive shock waves that would propagate through the Earth, creating widespread earthquakes. These seismic waves could be felt thousands of kilometers away from the impact site. Material ejected from the crater would be thrown into the atmosphere and distributed over a vast area. This debris would include pulverized rocks, minerals, and possibly vaporized asteroid material. Some of the ejecta would re-enter the atmosphere, causing secondary impacts and widespread fires. The ejecta, consisting of dust and aerosols, would enter the atmosphere and block sunlight, leading to a phenomenon known as impact winter. This would result in a significant drop in global temperatures, potentially lasting for months to years. The impact could also cause the release of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, leading to the formation of sulfuric acid aerosols and acid rain. The acid rain would have had harmful effects on plant and aquatic ecosystems. The combination of dust blocking sunlight and the release of greenhouse gases from wildfires could lead to complex climate changes. Initially, a period of cooling known as impact winter would be followed by potential global warming due to the increased greenhouse gases. Acid rain and increased carbon dioxide levels could lead to ocean acidification, impacting marine life, particularly organisms with calcium carbonate shells or skeletons. The drastic environmental changes could lead to mass extinctions, particularly affecting species that are unable to adapt to rapid changes in climate, light, and temperature. The end Ordovician and Cretaceous Paleogene extinctions are examples of mass extinction events linked to asteroid impacts. Over time, the impact craters and the associated geological features could become new habitats for life. Lakes or seas may form in the craters, and the nutrient-rich soils from the impact could foster new plant growth. The dramatic environmental changes would create new evolutionary pressures, potentially leading to rapid evolution and the emergence of new species adapted to the post-impact environment. As a side note, if you enjoy this video, consider liking it to help YouTube promote it to other viewers. If you enjoy this type of content, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to be notified of every time we upload. We also have a Patreon for anyone who has the means to support the channel. The link to this will be in the description and in a pinned comment down below. Seismic and magnetic studies have revealed circular anomalies consistent with large impact craters. These anomalies suggest that the impacts created substantial fracturing and reorganization of the Earth's crust in the region, leading to the formation of deep basins. 
Similar to the impact in New South Wales and in South Africa, the Warburton impact sites exhibit multiple ring patterns, which are characteristic features of large impact structures. Multiple ring patterns are concentric rings of fractures and faults around the impact site, formed by the immense energy and shock waves generated during the impact event. The magnetic surveys of the Warburton basins have revealed symmetrical rippling patterns in the crust around the structure's core, indicative of multiple ring structures. These patterns are created by the redistribution of magnetic minerals during the impact, which are a key indicator of high pressure shock metamorphism typically associated with asteroid impacts. Geophysical modelling of the Warburton Basin has shown significant magnetic and gravity anomalies, supporting the hypothesis of an impact origin. These anomalies align with what is expected from the subsurface structures resulting from such impacts. Core samples from drilling operations have provided direct evidence of the impact structure, including the aforementioned shocked quartz and breaches. These samples help to confirm the impact origin and provide insights into the conditions during and after the impact event. Both the East and West Warburton impact sites exhibit features that suggest the presence of central uplift domes, which are a characteristic of large impact structures. Geophysical studies, including seismic tomography, have revealed low-velocity zones in the crust that are indicative of large-scale impact structures. Low-velocity zones, or LVZs, are regions within the Earth's subsurface where seismic waves travel more slowly than in the surrounding materials. These zones are significant in geophysical studies because they often indicate areas of geological complexity and can provide valuable insights into the subsurface structures and processes. These zones suggest significant fracturing and deformation consistent with the formation of central uplift domes. Magnetic surveys have detected circular patterns and low magnetic zones that align with the presence of central uplift structures. These anomalies reflect a disruption and redistribution of magnetic materials during the impact event. According to studies by Glickson and others, the West Warburton Basin shows a central low magnetic zone, which corresponds to a 30 km deep deformation above a seismically defined mantle dome. The geological features of the Warburton Basin, such as the presence of radial faults and specific magnetic patterns, are similar to other known impact sites with central uplifts, such as the Vredefort and Sudbury impact structures. These similarities strengthen the hypothesis that the Warburton sites also have central uplifts. The impacts that created the East and West Warburton basins could have influenced the formation and concentration of various mineral deposits. Impact events are known to create conditions favourable for the formation of certain types of mineral deposits through processes such as shock metamorphism, hydrothermal activity and the creation of breaches. Impact events can create extensive fracture networks and heat sources, leading to the circulation of hydrothermal fluids. These fluids can deposit minerals such as gold and copper in the fractured rocks, and are associated with iron oxide copper gold deposits. Hydrothermal veins and breaches formed in the wake of the impact might host these valuable minerals. Similar to gold and copper, hydrothermal systems associated with impact structures can also concentrate silver and lead, often found in sulphide minerals such as galena and argentite. The intense heat and fracturing from the impact can mobilise uranium, leading to the formation of uranium deposits. These deposits can form in brecciated zones or along faults created by the impact. If the impacting body contained nickel and platinum group elements, these elements could be introduced into the Earth's crust and concentrated in impact-related deposits. The Sudbury Basin in Canada, which we also made a video on, the link to that will be in the description, is a well-known example of an impact structure that hosts significant nickel and platinum group element deposits. In summary, an asteroid impact the size that formed the Warburton basins would have caused immediate catastrophic environmental changes, including massive explosions, wildfires and climate disruptions. These changes would have had long-term effects on the Earth's climate and ecosystems, potentially leading to mass extinctions and significant shifts in the evolutionary trajectory of life on Earth. Studies are still ongoing, as is exploration for mineral enrichment associated with the impacts that could be possible sites for future mines. So this is the story of the cataclysmic East and West Warburton impact sites. Even though they occurred hundreds of millions of years ago, there's nothing stopping an event like this from taking place again on our planet. If it did, it might spell the end of humanity. Thanks for watching.